Hello, I'm Michael Kennedy, Principal Analyst, ACG Research, and with me today is Makan Srigopal, who is with Product Marketing at Brocade. We are going to present a TCO analysis of three network packet broker architectures used to provide network analytics at scale. I will begin by discussing the need for network analytics. Then McCann will define the role of network packet brokers in scaling up network analytics. Discuss the strengths and weaknesses of two legacy packet broker architectures. Describe the brocade next gen visibility architecture and identify the issues that the architecture addresses. Finally, I'll present the results of a TCO comparison that we conducted at ACG Research. Let's begin by looking at the business situation. Mobile network operators' business models are in trouble. The chart shows a high growth rate in traffic driven primarily by rapid adoption of streaming video services. In itself, this is a good thing. But network costs are tracking right along with the traffic growth, while revenue is failing to keep pace. The slow revenue growth is caused by poor service differentiation, which is partly due to a lack of real-time mobility intelligence. The net result is deceleration of profits. The good news is that network analytics can address the weaknesses of the existing business model. Analytics can provide the information needed to control costs. It can provide the insights to identify and ameliorate security threats in real time. Analytics can provide real time performance data required to maintain service quality. And it can provide the mobility intelligence to create new services and generate new revenue sources. The mobile operator's challenge, however, is to provide network analytics at scale. The high volumes of video traffic, for example, illustrate the challenge. Under legacy analytics architectures, the cost of scaling network analytics for video traffic is prohibitive. Now, McCunn will show you how network packet brokers and a next-gen architecture are used to achieve the necessary scale. Thank you, Michael. The growth of analytics created the need for scalable mechanisms for delivering replicated network traffic to the analytics infrastructure. And this gave rise to a new category of products known as network packet brokers, which are network nodes that aggregate and curate traffic flows for consumption by out-of-band analytics tools. Packet brokers generally receive traffic from network taps or span ports on their ingress interfaces and forward traffic flows out to the analytics tools infrastructure through their egress or tool ports. Between ingress and egress processing, packet brokers perform three types of functions. The first is a basic set of forwarding functions that include flow aggregation, regeneration, load balancing, and basic layer two through layer four filtering. The second set of optimization functions improve the efficiency and productivity of the tool's infrastructure. Some examples of these optimization functions include timestamping, protocol stripping, packet truncation, and deep packet filtering. Because mobile networks have special traffic optimization needs, Several vendors offer a third set of advanced mobility-aware optimization functions like GTP and RTP session correlation, subscriber and radio-aware traffic forwarding, and deduplication of redundant barrier flows. Packet broker architectures are evolving to meet the growing demand for scale, intelligence, and programmability, and in the following slides, we'll explore this architectural evolution further. The first generation of network packet brokers, which are still widely deployed, were a tremendous improvement over simplistic tapping and mirroring mechanisms, offering much better scale and numerous traffic optimization capabilities. But as traffic conditions change, forcing networks to either evolve or break, and as monitoring and analytics tools begin to play increasingly central roles in the effective operation and monetization of mobile networks, these monolithic packet broker architectures just don't measure up. 
In this slide, we compare two such legacy packet broker architectures. In the first architecture on the left, advanced traffic optimization and mobility functions are performed in special line cards or modules, and ingress traffic needs to be funneled through these special modules to be optimized. The number of these special traffic optimization modules that can be installed in a packet broker chassis are also limited. The problem with this architecture is that with growing traffic, these special optimization line cards compete with ingress and egress cards for slots in the chassis, and this results effectively in a zero-sum game. Further, the limited processing capacity of these specialized modules creates bottlenecks for scalability, necessitating the acquisition of additional chassis nodes to scale traffic optimization capacity. And this significantly impacts the total cost of ownership of the visibility infrastructure. The second architecture to the right introduces a specialized appliance for mobile traffic optimization functions. And this requires mobile operators to simultaneously scale both the packet broker and the specialized hardware appliance as traffic volumes grow. The cost of scaling this architecture rapidly becomes prohibitive. And with both these legacy hardware-based architectures, new feature rollouts involve longer and more expensive release cycles the impact of which are ultimately borne by their customers. These legacy packet broker architectures therefore fail to meet the growing needs of today's demanding mobile networks. At Brocade, we're passionately committed to enabling operators to transition to next generation network architectures and new business models to succeed in today's demanding business environment. And we saw an opportunity to leverage our strengths in software networking and automation to create the next generation network visibility architecture combining the flexibility, scalability, and favorable economics of software with the horsepower and performance of Brocade's industry-leading hardware platforms. Brocade Packet Broker introduces a scalable software-based mobile control processing entity known as the Smart Management Engine that runs on commodity off-the-shelf hardware. The Brocade Smart Management Engine monitors mobile control traffic and automatically maps the topology of the mobile network to enable advanced mobility-aware traffic optimization. The separation of forwarding and control processing functions provides resource and feature scalability. Unlike legacy solutions, Brocade Packet Broker eliminates specialized modules and appliances that create bottlenecks and resource contention. This allows operators to exploit the full potential of the Brocade Packet Broker hardware, which offers more than 15 terabits of processing capacity per second, high port density, and unparalleled performance. The presence of a software-based control layer allows analytics and management applications to modify flow policies in real time while reducing the time needed to roll out new features. The Smart Management Engine brings advanced mobility intelligence, providing granular subscriber, network, and protocol-aware traffic forwarding. This enables mobile operators to realize the true potential of their analytics investments. And now, I'll pass it back to Michael to share the findings of the total cost of ownership study that compared legacy and ne next-generation network visibility architectures. ACG Research compared the TCO of the two legacy architectures with Brocade's next-gen architecture. We found that the next-gen packet broker has 23% lower TCO than the purpose-built line card architecture, and 33% lower TCO than the purpose-built appliance architecture. If you look at the chart, you can see that both CapEx and OpEx savings are realized. Let's talk about the sources of the savings. The first is offloading of mobility intelligence to low-cost software rather than continuing to use high-cost hardware. The second is moving only the mobility control processing function to the software while keeping the actual traffic forwarding function in the packet broker hardware. The third is freeing up expensive hardware resources like slots, ports, and compute on the packet broker for doing compute-intensive forwarding functions. The fourth is providing higher port density and capacity on the packet broker hardware, which provides scalability and investment protection. Finally, the next-gen architecture stimulates revenues. 
its speedier workflow accelerates service creation, while its lower cost supports more attractively priced service offerings. So let's summarize. Network analytics at scale is needed to relieve stressed network operator business models. It enables cost-efficient operations and improves agility. It speeds service creation and makes service pricing more attractive. We've shown that network packet brokers are used to mediate between the network and the analytics infrastructure to achieve network analytics at scale. We compared the TCO of two legacy packet broker architectures with the next-gen packet broker. We found that the next-gen packet broker increases agility and achieves up to 33% lower TCO compared to visibility 1.0 or legacy architectures. These agility and TCO advantages provide the foundation for delivering network analytics at scale. This is needed to resolve the issues faced by the current business model. To learn more about ACG Research's analysis or the Brocade NextGen architecture, reach out to our contacts shown on the last slide. Thank you.